And the last presentation is changes in bone turnover markers after delivery in breastfeeding mothers with and without ART, presented by Kirsten Bautrocytis from United States. Good morning, thank you for having me. Uh, I have no conflicts of interest to disclose. So as part of the postpartum component of the IMPACT PROMISE trial, breastfeeding mothers with HIV in their infants were randomized to either a maternal TDF-based ART regimen or infant nevirapine prophylaxis without maternal ART to prevent HIV transmission through breast milk. Previously published data from this trial showed that women in the maternal ARV arm experienced a greater decline in bone mineral density from postpartum week one to week 74 than women in the infant nevirapine arm. However, the underlying mechanisms of these observed differences in percent change in BMD is not fully established. So here, we compared the trajectory of the bone turnover biomarkers between arms and evaluated their association with change in but bone mineral density. So similar to the bone mineral density study, we used data from the P1084S substudy, which was a nested comparative study of bone, renal, and growth outcomes in women with HIV in their infants. This substudy enrolled 400 women from eight sites in four African countries with capacity for BMD evaluation and no prior exposure to TDF ART. As part of our trial procedures, we collected urine and serum samples at entry, postpartum week six, 26, and 74. And then we did assays for bone resorption markers, including urinary deproxylidine to creatinine levels, serum C-terminal te telepeptides, as well as osteoclastin, which is a born, bone formation marker. For the statistical analyses, we compared the UDPD at arms between weeks, at week 74 using students' t-tests, and this was our predefined primary outcome measure. We also described the postpartum trajectories of these biomarkers using spaghetti plots and low-S regression. We compared them longitudinally using generalized estimating equations that accounted for these repeated measures. And then we evaluated the association for biomarkers at entry and percent change in lumbar spine and hip BMD from entry to week 74 using adjusted linear regression models. Our baseline characteristics were similar across arms, as was the breastfeeding duration and contraception uptake. For UDPD, um, as shown here, the maternal ARV arm, as shown in green, was slightly declined from entry to week 74, whereas the infant MVP arm, shown here in blue, decreased from entry to week six and then sort of st stabilized. For a primary outcome measure at week 74, the difference was 0.6 nanomoles per millimole, and um, this was not statistically different. For serum C-terminal telepeptides, um, in the maternal ARV arm, it increased from entry to week, through week 70, 26 uh, in the maternal ARV arm. However, in the infant nevirapine arm, it decreased slightly across time. And then finally, for osteoclastin, um, in the maternal ARV arm, again shown in green, it increased from entry through week 26, um, whereas the infant nevirapine arm just had a slight increase from entry to week 74. Looking at the association with percent change from entry to week 74, or sorry, yes, <laughs> week 74 in lumbar spine and hip bone mineral density, um, for lumbar spine, both UDPD as well as osteoclastin showed a positive association with percent change in lumbar spine. There was no apparent association with CTX. For hip, um, osteoclastin uh, showed a positive association. Uh, however, there was no apparent association between UDPD and CTX. So in conclusion, at postpartum weeks six and 26, the maternal ART arm had a higher mean UDPD, CTX, and osteoclastin compared to the infant nevirapine arm. Um, these results could indicate the underlying mechanism for a great percent change in the observed postpartum maternal ART. However, the clinical significance of these changes is still under discussion. All right, so thank you. <laughs>